Hi everyone, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts and today I am working on a pair of over the knee socks. I wear mostly uh, skirts and it's going to be that cold time of the year and I'd like to have some socks that, you know, come up a little bit more, give a little better protection. I've been making a lot of really tall socks recently. They usually come up at least mid-calf or higher. So this is just another step further. Now the easiest way to do this, I would think, would be to make the ripping at the top um, with just a little wider gauge. But in this case, I do have a river. I have a river dial for every um, cylinder I have. But what I don't have um, are the skills yet to use the river. So I'm kind of moving ahead of myself and I'm going to use the skills that I have to produce what I want. And so uh, with a little help from my friends, <laughs> well, probably a lot of help from my friends, um, we devised that I would just simply loosen the gauge, uh, starting from the top down, and that would make the adjustment for the circumference and then narrow it down or step it down to the gauge, which I would normally um, do socks right around the calf. So if I'm normally making myself a sock, I'm going at about 10 stitches per inch for the yarn I'm using, a little higher when I do the alpaca. And basically that's that 10 stitches per inch from the hung hem all the way down to the ankle. Socks fit perfectly fine. Okay, and they have a little stretch. They would have more stretch if I was using ribbing or even a mock ribbing. We'll save that for the, the next set I make. So at any rate, what I'm doing here is I turn the machine up. The current setting right here is as low a gauge as I believe is possible on this machine. I don't want to crank it any lower. And that brings me, at, I think it was somewhere between five to six stitches per inch, somewhere around there. And so I've set it up with the waist yarn here. And this is the Revel Cord. This is my first time using the Revel Cord. When I made the first sock, I forgot and I didn't use it. So we'll see how this goes. And I'm currently about to crank 10 rows. I'm going to slow to make sure it's sewn properly. And I can't remember if I showed you the, um, I'm trying to figure out why it's stuck here. I can't remember if I showed you the actual row counter on the other video. I'm just gonna check this out. Got stuck down at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm not certain, but there's a row counter in front of me over that way. And I have a mark on my cylinder. You can't see in the dark right here. And that mark corresponds to when the number changes on the row counter. Okay, so I'm at 10. Or I will be at 10. And so I'm going to go ahead and move these stitches for the pico edge. Now here's where I always get in trouble at. When I'm moving these stitches for the pico edge, I really have to be careful I'm not closing latches. Because it seems like I get all the way around and all the stitches want to drop. And that's because somewhere along the line, I've closed the latch. Oh, there we go. So I had this yarn I've had for years when I started knitting in 2011 or 2012 or something like that. Before that, I crocheted. And I started knitting because I wanted to learn how to make socks. I love socks. And I went to a local yarn store and all they had was this Malabringo, I think it's called, sock yarn. It's all Merino sock yarn. Um, I have I have thoughts about Merino sock yarn, but anyway. Um, I can't remember the color I got. Oh, it was gray. I got a gray. So socks are somewhere. And I got a black because I love black socks. They go with everything. Now, I didn't really think about the fact of how complicated it is to knit with tiny black yarn. You know, I've crocheted with worsted weight black yarn before. So at that point, I hadn't really thought about that. 
And so I never did make those black socks. And that's one of those skeins I just kind of had. I've got a silk skein like that, which I believe is Malabringo too. And never used it, just never could figure out what I wanted to make with it or when I was going to have the nerve to knit those black socks. Well, uh, a couple weeks ago, I pulled out some skeins to use with the Centro. Decided no for that one, and I have not seen it since. Let me check all these. Oh, there goes Notorious right there. One right here. So I don't know where that yarn went, but when I got the stash from Knit Fair a few weeks ago, there was plenty of black uh, Peyton's Croy. So that's what I'm going with here. And I figured, hey, this is the machine now. It will be easier to knit with the black yarn. And honestly, <laughs> no. Oh, we just dropped that one. We don't want to lose that baby. It's still black yarn. It's still complicated. Also, I've noticed that this croy seems to be thicker than the other croys. And, and I was I had posted in the Circular Sock Knitting Group 2.0, and one of the fellow crankers told me that she just did five socks, same gauge, and came out five different ways with the croy socks, which I haven't had an experience with that yet. Uh, but it's good to know. So it wasn't just me being picky. It is a highly variable sock yarn. That's all there is to that one. Okay, so here we go. This is the last Pico. Okay, I'm going to check these again. As you see... I'm flicking down some latches that were closed, which are going to cause me a lot of grief if I don't make sure that's right. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and crank to 20. That looks okay so far. Okay, there we go. Oh, that one looked a little weird, but no, it's fine. Okay, so right before I hit the 20 mark, I want to go ahead and hang the hem. I believe I hung the hem in the very first video, so you don't really need to watch me hang the hem. But just really quickly... Okay, here's my thing about hanging the hem. I took all the weights off. And I find sometimes that when I go to pull up the hem, this part over here rises. And then it's it gets caught on the needles because those things are very sharp. So what I'm actually going to do is take one of my heel weights and put it over here. You know what? Maybe I think I want that one closer. And what I'm probably going to wind up doing is getting a set of the stitch markers I have and putting them on clips and hanging them on the inside. So I don't have that problem. Seems like it only happens at certain times. And of course, since this is like black, I have to try to see where it starts. It's not like the other yarns, you know, where you can kind of follow down. Okay, I'm thinking this one goes here. Okay, of course you can't see that. I'm not even sure how to make it possible to be seen. Okay, now you can sort of see. But I'm just picking up that loop. Putting it on. 
actually this would be a good time for me to take a break and I'm gonna turn the camera around and see if I can get this accomplished without hitting it too many times all right let's see if this works you know what I might start doing is going back to the um, the glasses the sport glasses so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing those were pretty cool and I do still have them okay yeah see that makes much more sense taking the first row hanging it onto the needle and then when I come around again it will seam those two rows together and that will give me a folded over seamed hem also known as a hung hem and that's pretty much what I've been doing with all of my socks until I get mastery of the river or at least until I find the river needles and attempt to get mastery of the river Okay, this is pretty much about as far in this particular journey as you're going to be able to go with me without another camera change. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and finish this all around. And when I get to um, the other end, I'm going to start cranking, and this will clean up really nicely. Okay, so as far as I can tell, everything went fine, and I'm just going to crank around. Check and make sure. Okay, peachy. Now, okay, so I wrote my instructions. And this is actually the third sock. Um, the first sock was the test one. And I thought it went well. I just wanted it to be longer or taller, depending on how you're thinking about it. So I did the second sock with the adjustment. And it was great. So I figured it was time to make a mate for it. All right, let's see. So I did my 10. I did the Pico. I did the 10, I hung it. Now I'm gonna turn it up a half a notch. Okay, so my little notch setting goes over here and this is completely opposite. Instead of being loosey, lefty, righty, tighty, it's righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. So I'm making a, can you, I don't know if you can see that down there. Here's the, the gauge, the dial for the, or the nut, they wanna call it a nut for the tension and what it's actually doing is um the v-cam is here mm, like anybody can see that hang on a moment let me figure out the best way to show you what i'm talking about without moving the camera i'm gonna put a little light on it that should do it aha okay so let's see this gray thing down here this is the v-cam okay and so as it goes up, get more tension. And as it goes down, get less tension. As you can see, it's pretty low. Okay. And so I'm going to turn it to the left to get more tension. And there's a little notch right here. And there's actually a little pop it makes when I've completed the turn. It's 180. Not, yes, 180 degrees. And it did a little click. I don't know if you could hear that. And I know I've gone my half turn. Okay, so after my first half turn, um, I'm going to crank 30 rows. So I'm going to set my dial again. Okay, move that light back, way back. I need the light to not interfere with the um, with the yarn mast. 
And at the same token, I need it not to shine up in my face. So this is just a uh, clamp light I picked up at the thrift store. There are more appropriate lights, but hey, we're on a budget here, so that's all we're going to get. It does, it's doing its job. You know, it's got a flexible neck, so I just have to kind of flex it. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. So far, so good. This second one actually turned out um, bigger than I wanted it. But hey, in this case, bigger is better. So, just adjusting the handle here. Point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, thirty. Okay, so my little instruction book here. And it says, turn it again, another half. Could you hear that click? And then go 15 rows. So if you, if you can imagine, I'm kind of working my way over my kneecap, which is at 30, down at the bottom of the kneecap where it kind of bends in, and then um, going out to the thigh, or not the thigh, out to the calf, okay? So that was, there's 30, then we can do another 15. So we got a 15, we turn it down another half, and we're going to crank seven. Ooh, sometimes this thing is not all that easy to turn. I haven't quite figured out what the deal is with that. If there's something we're supposed to be pulling or pushing or, I don't really know. There it goes. Okay, so that's my turn. And I'm going to go another seven. And all these numbers, by the way, are just arbitrary. Um, at the moment, I am probably seven stitches per inch. Well, probably about eight or eight or so. So it was just arbitrary for me to kind of measure and see how that works. Okay, so that's that seven. I'm going to turn another half and go another seven. You just have to kind of figure out for yourself. Okay. Now, after that one, I crank down and then I am going to go 130. And that should be basically the entire length of my calf all the way down to my ankle, at which point I'm going to make a heel. So I've already made heels several different times and I'm thinking that maybe, no, 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 I was gonna say I'm thinking that's where I wanna stop the video, but no, I don't because, um, because of the thickness of this yarn and the gauge it gives me, it is different from the other video which is, well, you know, that's an ice, ice yarn, but still, it's a little different. So when I did the measurement for my foot, for the other yarns, I had been cranking out 48 and getting a, a snug foot. This one was thicker. It was thicker than the other patent yarns, patent croys. And so I actually only cranked 40 for this one. So that foot is different. So just keep in mind when you're changing yarns, um, if you were hand knitting, you would, you know, 
I don't actually, I don't know how you hand knit, but when I hand knit, I try my uh, sock on from the toe up. And so I actually make the adjustments as I'm knitting on my, my own foot, which is why I generally didn't hand knit socks for anybody else. Cause I really wasn't like a formula follower for that. I just had to get it like a, like a glove on my foot. So uh, normally what you would do is swatch gauge, which was never my thing, or you'd make the correction. So in this case, I had to make the correction based on this thickness of this yarn, which is a little more than sock weight, in my opinion. So at any rate, just going to put that in there, watch the yarn. So other than that, this will be just like the other video where I'm going to do the heel and then crank to 40 and do the toe. And I'm going to do that. And then I will Kitchener the socks and show you what they look like. Here's the finished product. I put this on my quilting board so you can sort of get an idea of what the actual length is in the board. Um, for the measured part, the board is 20 inches and this kind of goes off the board here. Kitchen up the toes. This is a really thick, solid uh, pair of socks. Now here's the, the top where I did the Pico at. And I had some choices. I could put the elastic in here uh, or the ribbon or have a ribbon garter down here. So I decided to thread the ribbon through. Just made me feel a little more historic. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I might also try the garter around here. You know, to be honest, I can't even begin to imagine how ribbons and garters around your thigh would be at all comfortable but it's the way things have been done for centuries. So I don't know, maybe it is comfortable. Maybe, you know, you just don't notice. I don't know. I'll find out. So I'll let you know how that goes in a different block, but I did try them on and they fit and uh, no, I'm not going to model them. <laughs> um, at any rate, this went pretty well. So hopefully the video made sense to you and um, at the moment that's about all the advice or commentary I can offer on making these like I said if I had done ribbing it would have been an easier matter and there's a gentleman in the circular sock group uh, named Steve Ashton he has videos um, he makes kilts and he makes socks to uh, accompany the kilts. So he has it all worked out about making socks with pretty large circumferences at the top, which would be great for thigh high socks for ladies. So you could probably look up his videos on YouTube. Uh, if I find the link for videos that are available, I'll try to remember to post it somewhere so you can check him out and get more information. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.